Okay, so today I'm going to show you how a decompressor works on a 400EX. I was unable to find a bunch of information on this, so uh, I decided to open it up and take a look for myself. So the first assembly on your camshaft, which is typically located right here, is actually a reverse decompressor. It's whenever the engine spins backwards, it'll open the exhaust valve. So some people online are talking about... Uh, shaving a tab in the valve cover here this tab right here the trouble is this tab right here only associates itself with the reverse decompressor this has nothing to do with standard starting this build out right here is the face that the uh, standard automatic decompressor rides on so right there so if you are going to cut your valve uh your your rockers you're probably going to want to cut all the way back to this point here where it rides on the uh, typical lobe on the camshaft and you can see the marks on the rocker right there you can see the mark right there and this one's got a tight little mark somewhere out here nothing too big I doubt this motor is kicking backwards too often. So the question was, how does this work? And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, it only works at low RPMs. And I understand that. But what they don't uh, explain is how exactly this little lobe here works. So I'm going to slide it off the camshaft here. We're going to take a look. Okay. So you will notice the top, nothing fancy, just a big notch cut out of it. That's just a, for the locating pin there on the cam. I roll this the other way. Notice on the bottom of the cam, it has that little notch right there. And uh, typically a spring sitting in that hole, and the spring's been removed currently. That notch, typically, most of the time, should be sitting right in the lower groove there. Let's uh, see if we can get this focus in. All right, so typically sits in lower groove, but as I turn this si sideways, you'll see uh, that there's a little tiny notch down in there, right, ab right above the large notch. You'll see a much smaller notch. Let's see if I can get any good photos of that. Yeah, it's probably got a good angle there. So right there, you'll see a nice little notch right above it. So what this does, and uh, I'll see if I can prop this up here and we'll, we'll get a good look at it. Throw another glove on. All right. So. Let's position this correctly. This is normally sitting on the crankshaft, just like that. Nothing too crazy. Now, as, as the camshaft comes around, my thumb is going to, uh, to be the, uh, <coughs> the rocker. And it's pushing on both on this lobe, on this uh, flexible decompressor lobe. And as it comes around, as it comes around, it will, as it's continually pushing inward towards the inside of the camshaft, let's get that seated, it's going to push and come around and actually push this thing off a notch. You'll hear a little click. And what that's doing is at first, I wish I could get better video of this. So the spring inside will keep this uh, oriented in the down position at the low RPMs. While the uh, rocker is pushing against this, it's actually going to force this uh, the uh, decompressor up onto that higher notch, that gap in there. Let's see if we can get a good gap. So it's gonna sit on top of that little that little notch that I was pointing out earlier. This little tab is actually sitting up on that notch, and as the uh, camp the rocker is pushing up on this in that position. So as it comes around, it's gonna kind of push and kind of hold it there on that uh, 
on that upper notch. And then as it comes around, as it's pushing a different direction, it actually pushes it off the notch and this thing slips back into position and kind of locks there. So that's the clicking you're hearing when people talk about the decompressor letting go. <clears throat> the reason why that's important is I think once this uh, camshaft gets spinning fast enough, I think centripetal force will actually cause this um, the decompressor to stay in the down position at all times. So uh, what I'm maybe not a down position, but probably just closer to the cam where this gap is filled in here. But normally under low RPMs or no RPMs during starting, that spring's going to take over, and this is going to sit just out like that. So again. That's normal, uh, everyday engine running. And under, when the bike's off, it's gonna pop out a little bit, just like that. And uh, normally, you just, like I said, you just, this pops in and out. But, uh, the part I never understood is how does this function as the decompressor? And what's actually happening is, not only does it drop down, it twists slightly, and it sits right there, just like that. So you'll notice that the, uh, the pin is no longer in the groove it's sitting just outside it and the cam or the rocker is actually going to push it and kind of hold it right where my thumb's at it's going to hold it there it's going to hold it there and then uh what that's doing is it's uh keeping that rocker open for just a second so you know the rocker's kind of sliding along this profile and it meets your decompressor decompressor's got a little more aggressive profile than the cam itself so it's going to lift the valve just a little bit as this is rotating keeping in mind that it's always pushing inward on the camshaft the whole time. And as this comes around, it's going to slip just like that. It's going to slip down into its groove, and then all of a sudden your decompressor is not doing anything anymore. So, I, uh, again, I, the reason for this video was to indicate how this system works. Uh, there was a good bit of slop on this before taking it apart, but uh, I was, uh, I'm under the impression that that's how it's supposed to be because I don't see much wear. I think this is supposed to have that notchy feeling to it, and uh, I want to say that that's how the decompressors work on these bikes. Again, that bigger assembly uh, off to the side here, I don't think it does anything for starting. I think it's only in the event on the kickstart bikes that uh, you have maybe like a backfire or something like that, and a kickstarter wants to come back at you. Um, this will blip the exhaust valve as it spins backwards. It'll cause it to ride this cam profile. But this only occurs when the, the camshaft spins backwards, contrary to normal uh, spinning motion. The exhaust valve will ride this profile, it'll stay open and kind of uh, make it so uh, the next time you kick it, you don't have uh, a bunch of gases built up in the cylinder. Uh, once this comes back around, the spring that comes from the head, um, I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with that by now, but you know, the spring and the dowel that, that sits right there. Under normal operation, this thing is never moving because this little notch on the reverse decompressor gets caught by the spring and the dowel. So normal operation, this thing does nothing for you. Uh, so just, uh, just, you know, a quick pointer. You can apparently remove these. I've never tried it, but I'm going to try it uh, on this bike. And I think I'm also going to go ahead and weld up uh, these two holes. Very common thing to do. You've got a hole underneath where the spring sits normally. And you've got a hole, uh, an oiling hole on the reverse decompressor here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, is that the reverse decompressor? Yeah. Yeah, because this only sits up to there correct so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and just put a little couple of tack welds over these holes kind of fill those in reason for that is the way the head works is oil gets pumped to just one side of this camshaft um, you'll notice that the bearing for that particular side of the camshaft has a seal on one side and uh, open balls on the other so what that's doing is uh, acting like a plug so all the oil that gets pumped up to the head gets pumped into the camshaft. Can't go around the bearing. Goes through the camshaft and out these oiling holes. Boop, 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 boop. All right, yeah, there they are. Right? So uh, that's how your head oils itself. Unfortunately, some people are talking about the idea that if you leave these open without some sort of mild resistance on them, 
you know, normally from the uh, decompressor and reverse decompressor, then you're going to squirt all your oil out here. It's never going to make it to the end of the camshaft, you know, to these guys out here. Uh, yeah, in theory, that's probably the case. So it doesn't hurt to throw a couple of tack welds on there and, uh, and plug these up. And you'd probably be good to go after that. Uh, the aftermarket camshafts don't have any of this stuff whatsoever, so I think it's safe to assume that it's probably not uh, all that imperative to have on the bike. Um, yeah, okay, so great. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll try my best to answer them, and uh, thanks.